the packet to Tom who kept it a long time. Now I cannot practically write each and every question. So maybe one or two of each type I am going to take up on the board. And based on the concept uh, we can discuss. So I gave the packet to Tom who kept it a long time said Pamela. You know when it is, uh, it is direct speech, when it is direct speech, it is basically somebody who is saying it in actual. Indirect speech, when another party is actually reporting what has been said by another person. That's the core difference between direct and indirect, where somebody reports as to what is being said, which is the reason why indirect speech is also known as reported speech. Okay, so there are a few rules, um, as I said grammar, of course there are a lot of rules, there is some simple logic also that follows, let us understand that. In the first question where, you, where it says I gave the packet to Tom who kept it a long time said Pamela, there are four options, you know when, it, when a direct speech is changed into indirect speech, as I mentioned there are few obvious changes, where the verb when the subject I, okay, I gave the packet to Tom who kept it a long time, said Pamela. Now, who is talking about this? Pamela. Who is the speaker here? In first, it is Pamela. We are discussing first one. Okay, first, it is Pamela who is speaking, who is reporting, Pamela reporting, right? Yeah. And then, what does Pamela say? I gave the packet to Tom who kept it a long time. So in indirect speech it would be Pamela said that, now the first obvious change, the first obvious change, there is a conjunction, introduction of the conjunction that, conjunction that, these are the obvious changes, okay, obvious changes. So based on these concepts you can actually arrive at your responses. Uh, I get, Pamela said that, so when we know when we are reporting we use, there is an additional uh, conjunction which is that, that, what does the conjunction do? It will link, right? Said that. Now who gave the packet? She gave. Now I, because it is not I anymore and Pamela as the name suggests is a girl, the I changes to she, okay, she being Pamela, that's again the pronoun to she, the change happens, the I becomes the she and then let's look at the third change, I gave the packet, now gave is simple past tense, when, when uh, direct speech is changed to indirect speech, the simple past tense becomes past perfect tense. Simple past tense, simple past tense becomes past perfect, right? So you all know that for give, give is the verb, gave is the simple past tense here, in this case it is gave. So as the rule suggests, when you are changing it from direct to indirect speech, it will become, gave becomes had given. Okay, gave becomes simple past becomes had given. So this is one of, these are a few obvious changes that happen. I changes to she, the introduction of the conjunction that, the simple past, if the verb is in the simple past tense as one of the rules also on our video lesson suggests, the simple past tense becomes past perfect which is had given, right. So, Considering these rules, do we have a response here? Yes, we do. Pamela said, Pamela said that she had given the packet to Tom and the rest of it is information. Who kept it for a long time? That's additional information, but we have converted the direct speech into indirect speech. Now, uh, we know that whenever something is kept, it is kept for a long time. Okay, so either you said for a long time or for a duration. Any sentence structure follows subject plus verb plus indirect object plus direct object followed by place and time. Who kept it 
for a long time. So, uh, although in the question it says who kept it a long time, you can say who kept it for long time. Okay? Because you keep something for a particular direction. So, because this option is here, so you have to choose the most appropriate one. Otherwise, they would not have given this option. There are three options where it says who kept it a long time, who kept it a long time. But that's also one of the changes that you can make because this is most appropriate. Alright. So, I think considering the fact that in the main sentence it's written who kept it a long time, you've chosen that response. However, when you talk about more appropriateness, then everything else is correct except the a uh and for long time. Alright. Which means D, not 3, 4 is grammatically more correct. Great. So using this concept, again, we saw the obvious changes when direct changes to indirect. Right? So this was for the first question. Let's look at the second one. I was digging the garden when the doctor arrived. Replied Harry. Replied Harry. Okay. Harry said that, Harry said, now we know that we can't change the subject, Harry said, we have to introduce that, okay. We're looking at the second question now. We're looking at the second question, okay. Let's see what are the obvious changes here. Uh, Harry, as the name appears again, looks like a... Um, guy or a male so of course in place of I replied Harry in place of I you will change it to he in this case it is Harry right Harry and she becomes he right now the few tense changes in this case question number two we're going to discuss very quickly the tense form Tense form also changes of the verb. Yeah. Harry said that he now was digging. Was digging is past continuous. Okay. Past continuous. So let's understand any past continuous changes into past perfect continuous okay so past perfect continuous so in this case past continuous past continuous changes to past perfect continuous all right so harry said that he had been digging the garden when the doctor Arrived. Okay. Harry said that he had been digging the garden. Had been digging the garden when the doctor arrived. So the correct answer is B. For two it is B. Okay. One it is D. So did you see how the tense form changed? The past continuous changed to past perfect continuous. Simple past changes to past perfect. Past continuous changes to past perfect continuous. Past perfect remains as it is. Okay? So let's understand that. So based on that rule, the second, Harry said that he had been digging the garden when the doctor arrived. Okay. Third, I would have been surprised if you had passed the examination, okay, said the former master. The former master said that, we use this that. Third question, the former master said that he would have been surprised, that's also one of the rules, would have been surprised if, now you, now you know that the former master is talking to somebody. Now, when you report it, so you are stating it now. The former master was surprised. What former master said that 
he would have been surprised if I had passed the examination. So the change that happens is you changes to I here. Okay, because who is the conversation between between the person who is stating it and the other party is the former master here. So in the third, it is D. Absolutely right. Fourth, I will put this key here, said the, said the caretaker. The caretaker said that, now will, would change to would. Okay, will changes to would. Let's look at another rule. Few rules as and when they appear. We know that that comes in. We know that uh, the pronoun changes. Then we also know the tense changes and certain words change like will changes to would, can changes to. These are called modal verbs. Could, shall changes to, should, may changes to, might, etc. Etc. Right? So, let's understand this. I will put this key here. Now, this also changes to, ideally it should change to that. However, if that's not in the option, we have to look at the other changes. Alright? Obvious changes is something that you need to really pay attention to. So, if you look at it, I will put this key here. The caretaker said that, he, I, he said that. So we've already got that. Okay. Said that. Now I would change to he. He. Okay. We've got the pronoun change to he. Would put the key there. Now here changes to again. Here changes to there. Here changes to there. Now changes to then. Now changes to then. Yesterday changes to the previous day or the day before. Okay. Tomorrow changes to the next day. From direct to indirect, tomorrow changes to the next day. Few things. Okay. So these are a couple of changes. So the caretaker said that he would put the key there. Here changes to there. So considering all those rules, fourth would be C. Right. I shall go tomorrow. As I just mentioned, tomorrow, next day. Okay? So, I shall go tomorrow, he said. He said that, now he is the only person who we are talking about here, that he, now what is the difference between, should you say should here? No, that he should go tomorrow. He said that he shall becomes should. Okay? That he should go Tomorrow, he said that he should go the next day. If you do not have that, you cannot say tomorrow is tomorrow. You have to say tomorrow as the next day. So what are the two options? As I said, tomorrow becomes next day. Right? These are the rules that we are following. Couple of other rules here. Tomorrow becomes next day. Okay? And yesterday becomes the previous day or the day before. So if you based on that particular change, which is also another change, um, we can rule out option C and D. Okay? So the only two options that we have is, have our A and B. He said that he would go the next day or he said that he shall go the next day. Now if you say he would go, I shall go, shall, although it becomes should, but when you say will becomes would, it talks about more certainty. I shall go tomorrow. It is likely that his chances of going the next day may or may not happen. Okay, there is still 
a benefit of doubt, a slight doubt. So because of which, when you say he would go, means it's absolutely certain. Okay? So shall will not change to would. Shall can remain as shall in informal conversations. However, in actual formal books of grammar, shall can change into should. But there's nothing like should. Nobody is asking you to do it. He, it is his decision. Right? And when you say would, you cannot convert change, okay, cannot change shall to would because would uh, affirms that you're more certain, you suddenly wish, uh, you have to go the next day, right? You would go for sure. But shall does not talk about such, uh, such, a, 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 such a confirmation. So we can stick to he shall go, but we have to change the next day, which is the obvious change. Right, so fifth becomes um, B. So the answers are one D, two B, three D, four C, five B. Right? Let's look at six. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Water said I cannot. Water said that I changes to he, he can changes to could, he could not do it then. We just discussed can changes to could, can changes to could, uh, now changes to then, now changes to then, right? So these are a few things. Tomorrow changes to next day, then yesterday changes to the previous day, etc. So Walter said I cannot do it now. Walter said that he could not do it, now changes to then. So D, 6 is D. 7. The master said that he would see me the next day. The master said, oh, now here you have to change it depending on said that. Okay, the master said, said the master, I will. Now would will again from the, from the indirect to the direct if you have to change. Then again, master said you have to keep it. Said the master, not say the master. Said the master. He becomes I, I, what would he do? Would becomes will, I will see you next day again. Because in indirect we change it to, the next day is tomorrow in direct. So I will see you tomorrow. So 7 is B. Okay, direct to indirect or indirect to direct. So the same changes. Next day is tomorrow. There is no that. Pronoun changes. Okay, like. He changes, tense changes, everything becomes just the opposite. Right? Let's look at question number 8. Father told Peter to clean his shoes. Father told Peter. Father said. Now father told Peter. There are two people engaged in a conversation. Said father. Okay? Said father we know in direct speech. Or we can say father said, comma. And then clean your shoes, Peter. Anything, any kind of, uh, uh, you know, you can you can always rearrange it anyway. Clean your shoes, Peter. Say, now look at this that way. Now said becomes told in case of when it, when there is a change from indirect to direct. Clean your shoes, Peter. Said father. Told is when they are. Engaged in a conversation. It's not a one-way communication. In this case, it looks like an order. Right? So, clean your shoes, Peter. Said father. Not ask. You always ask a question. Told father only when you convert it to direct, indirect speech. Says father. Why? Why says father? Why simple present tense? Said father. Because that's something that's already been spoken. We use simple present tense. Only to state facts. The sun rises in the east. Okay. The girl said, how happy I am. How happy I am. Now if you look at it, this is also very interesting. The girl said that. Now you can say when the girl said that, she is very happy. You cannot say she is very happy. Okay. Because any simple present tense will change to simple past tense. We are discussing the ninth question. The tense change. Simple present tense changes to simple past tense. In the ninth question, the girl said, how happy I am. The girl said that. Now you would ask me, why is it not said that as? 
Yes, but if you look at the other options, okay, if you look at the other options, you do not have the is changing to was. All right. However, in one of the options, that is the D option, you see the girl exclaimed that she was very happy. Present tense becomes past tense, and why is it saying ex exclaimed? It is because of the presence of the punctuation mark, which is an exclamatory mark. She is excited. It's a state of excitement that she is expressing. So, how happy I am. How happy she exclaimed. One can say it also, but a preferred, when there is an exclamation mark, the preferred verb is exclaimed. Alright, so we have that option. It's most appropriate. 9 is D. Mohan says that the teacher is not at home. Mohan says that the teacher is not at home. Mohan says, says, now if you look at it, says that teacher is not at home. It looks like a fact. Okay. Mohan says that teacher is not at home. Now, teacher, here in this case, because there is a simple present tense here, which means everyone is believing it. Okay, that the teacher is not at home. It looks like a fact. And when facts are said, then you stick to simple present tense here in this case. Mohan said teacher is not at home. Mohan said teacher was not at home. Which one should be correct? Teacher is not at home. Now, when you're converting this, now as I said, certain things. Mohan said, either that could be a statement that's already been said. Mohan says or... Some people are just talking right now. You know, for example, I'm in a, I'm on a telephone and I say, well, you know what, Mohan says that teacher is not at home. Which means, you just got the information. It's not something of the past. So that is the reason, that is the meaning of saying Mohan says that. Now when you say Mohan said, teacher is not at home. Mohan said, teacher was not at home. Because you're changing it to direct speech now, okay, Again, if in the indirect speech only, if it's saying teacher is not at home, you certainly cannot change that to teacher was not at home. Teacher is not at home. It is a fact that you're stating at the moment when you're conveying also. Okay? It is at the time when you're conveying that information, teacher is not at home. So, you can say teacher is not at home. So, the 10th is A. But I'll tell you why is it not C and it's A. It's because... When you say Mohan says that teacher is not at home, anytime you would report it, okay, anytime you would say to somebody that moment is gone, okay, which means those words that the teacher is the teach the presence of the teacher not being the teacher being absent at his home is a fact. So there you're not required to make any change. However, the Mohan saying part, okay, Mohan says which means some information that you have just received alright but when you convey or when you report it it becomes the reported speech and in this case it becomes said alright which is why you rule out not says because as you report Mohan does not say right when you when you say it directly you are conveying what Mohan says right uh, it's a direct speech Mohan says teacher is not at home Mohan says Mohan said, teacher is not at home. Oh, I'm sorry. Tenth, it is C. I was just misreading something. Tenth, it is not A, it is C. Yeah. Right, let's quickly discuss the next questions. He said, I have done my job. Okay, we'll, we'll not forget the rules here. Tomorrow changes. Also, I think yesterday... Changes to previous day. Okay. Previous day or the day before. Or the day before. Right. Eleventh. He said, I've done my job. Present perfect tense. I have done my job. Present perfect changes to past perfect tense. He said that. He said that. He had done. Now my becomes his. We've discussed it. He said that he, I changes to he, have changes to had and because it's done. Already the participle form, we know the tense changes. 
the participle form remains past perfect he had done his job so 11 becomes third the student said i'm doing my homework the student said i'm doing my homework the student said that i am changes to simple present changes to simple past as i mentioned student said that now here there is only she we don't have a he here so the student can be a boy or a girl but based on the responses maybe a girl is being talked about said that she am doing present continuous present continuous changes to past continuous she was doing whose homework neither yours nor mine her homework that she was doing her homework so based on that 12 is 1 right i think having these rules here is making it very easy for you all i said to the boy you have no ticket get out before you driven out okay now this is it's pretty harsh <laughs> I said to the boy, now if you look at it, you have no ticket, get out before you are driven out. It looks like an order actually. It actually looks like an order. So a preferred word, let's first check what are the obvious changes. So I think he had no ticket and that he should get out before he was driven out. Let's understand. I said to the boy or I told the boy, we don't have if you say I said then you have to use that if not I told the boy to get out I told the boy to get out before he was driven out as he had no ticket I ordered the boy to get out before he was driven out okay now in the D option although it is correct order is fine it's correct but information is missing okay about no ticket you cannot remove information when you're reporting something so i told the boy you can say i said i said to the boy that he should get out that i told the boy to get out before you changes to he before he are driven you are or he was present perfect was driven was driven out as he had no ticket i think this is fine uh, 13 is c 13 is third correct amelia is going to ask the principal for permission to go on a study tour is going to ask something reflective of a future tense so amelia is going to say to the principal to the principal generally we don't say going to say will say is what is generally used but we can't question the examiner who has said the question right so it's all right so amelia is going to say to the principal because the word is permission okay permission so in case of permission you either say could or uh, may all right and it's only uh, when when it is direct to indirect may changes to might however if it is indirect to direct then um, it will stay as may so Amelia is going to say to the principal based on those rules uh, I think may we have your permission to go on a study tour is the most preferred option 14 D Janet exclaimed now if you look at it, we said exclaimed. When there is an exclaimed, then in the direct speech there should be a punctuation mark. But, you know, examiners are the king, so we cannot question them. They have not put any punctuation, but still we have to find the answer. So Janet exclaimed that she had lost all her belongings at the airport that morning. She had lost. Past perfect. Okay. So uh, if you remember, I mentioned past perfect. Past perfect when it is in the um, indirect speech. When we do, when we convert it to the direct speech, it will change to simple past tense. Okay, because simple past changes to past perfect. So Janet said that. Janet said, "I lost, not had lost. I lost what all my belongings were at the airport that morning." So keeping this, you will have it. Janet said, "Comma." 
inverted commas begin i lost because here it says she had lost she changes to i had lost past perfect changes to simple past i lost all my belongings at the airport this morning all right so 15 is b 15 to Thomas said that he'd meet Andy the following Monday and asked if one o'clock suited him. Right? Thomas said he would, which means I will. Thomas said to Andy, I will meet you the following Monday, the next Monday. Anyway, everywhere it is the following Monday. Monday. Well, one o'clock suit you, and asked because it says and asked. You always ask a question, so will one o'clock suit you? Uh, we cannot say one o'clock suiting you because suit you means a preferred option. Suiting ing not required. Uh, does one o'clock suit you? When you say does. means you already want him to say yes will is like you're asking him will it suit you you know as if you are okay with either a yes or a no okay will one o'clock suit you now if you look at a and b okay it's quite unlikely if thomas said to andy suppose you and i are talking if um, hari or anand and i are talking and i'm talking to anand i, I wouldn't say well anand look at this i will probably say I will tell him the sentence directly, right? Uh, I would say, well, I will meet you, or I will discuss this question with you, Anand. I discuss this question with you tomorrow or the next day. I'm not going to use the name again. So, B is unlikely, though everything else. Also, I would meet you is not supposed to be used. So, I will meet you is sixteen one seventeen. Sandra said that she used to know a lot of people in Delhi, but that she had few friends in Kolkata. She used to know. She used to know a lot of people in Delhi, which means she knew a lot of people in Delhi. She knew. She used to know. Used to means something in the past. We say right. I used to eat. Uh, I used to eat. bread and butter for breakfast and now i don't right so when i say i used to means or i or i could say well i ate bread and break, uh, butter for breakfast uh, in the previous years or uh, uh, maybe 5 2 years back or a year back or few months back etc so it relates really, you to these series of events or past events okay so sandra said that she so because it's refer it refers to the past so had known okay i had known i used to know a lot of people in delhi sandra said i used to know a lot of people in delhi but now she becomes but i have few friends in kolkata so there's not too much change here she used to know a lot of people okay maybe now she does not So if you look at it, I had known a lot of people in Delhi, but I had few friends in Kolkata. Why would you say had known? Had known means either you lost your mind or uh, you know probably your retention capacity is too less. You know, you things are erased from your mind. Now that that kind of doesn't look very practical. So seventeen is the correct option is D. Seventeen four. Okay, eighteen. Very quickly, Mary said said that she was sorry. It's very simple. Eighteen, nineteen. Also very simple. Eighteen is one. Nineteen. He said to me, "What are you doing?" He asked me. Now, if there's a question mark, a preferred thing, he asked me, "What? What are you doing?" Actually, this is uh, this even in the responses, guys. I want you to pay even in the responses. some of the responses have not been structured properly however we cannot question the examiner as they are the kings so we have to choose the response based on the options available right so he said to me what are you doing so he asked me what i was doing basically we say what was i doing 
Okay, he asked me what I was, what was I doing? We don't say what I was doing. Right? Whenever the question, what was I doing? Not what I was doing. So, but here we do not have that option. So, considering what we have here, 19th A is the correct option or the first as you have. 19 what? 20. The technician told us how to maintain the machine in good working order. The technician said, here the people involved is we, right? The technician said, whom? Okay, us, maybe people who are listening. How to maintain the machine in good working order. Okay, now if you see, there's a little bit of logic also here. Okay, um, we don't say there is how you maintained. This is how you maintained the machine in good working order. Technician is giving instructions that if one follows, the machine can be maintained or can be continued in good working order. Right? So considering that concept, uh, 20, how you maintained? No. He is giving instructions to maintain, which is an ongoing activity, how to continuously keep it uh, working in a good condition. Right? This is how you is giving instructions. This is how you maintain the machine in good working order. Okay, it's an instruction. It's like a piece of instruction that the technician is giving. So 20 is again third. We're doing 21. Right. He said to me, you need not worry. You need not worry. Now if you look at it, uh, these are very interesting things actually, okay? It's not just about, uh, it's, uh, you know, your mom giving you 10 rules or you having read about or heard about 10 rules, but there's some things that in the exam you have to be a little conscious uh, of how can you apply, uh, how can you be, uh, how can you attempt the question logically, right? Uh, so let's understand this. He said to me, you need not worry. Now if you look at it, you need not worry kind of appears like a reassuring sentence as if I've gone through something that is um, you know that's not so uh, good or uh, maybe something that has tested my uh, tested something so or I've not been through a good phase so you say well you need not worry this is just a temporary thing things will fall in place etc right so what do you do you give assurance you give reassurance to a person right so basically he assured me that I need not worry. Alright? So, that is the reason why assured is there because of the words that have been used. You need not worry. Right? For example, um, I'm sure like you guys have cleared the uh, SSC CGL tier 1, right? Some of your friends may not have cleared. How would you tell them? Hey, buddy, don't worry. You need not worry. There's always a next time. Right? So, what are you doing? You're assuring the person. You are giving hope to the person not to worry. Right? So 21 um, is 2. Right? I hope it's clear. 20 seconds. He said I had a wonderful dream last night. Okay. I had. I had. Again past tense will change to past perfect tense. Okay. Now, um, this is pretty interesting. He said, now, generally you will feel, you will find that 90% of the students will make a mistake in this question because the moment they'll see, they'll say he said that he saw a wonderful dream last night. But do we literally open our eyes and see? No, we do not literally see. It's, it's a flow of, it's a series of events which appear in our mind. Correct? So we don't literally use our senses of sight or we do not use our eyes in actual to see. Right? So you have a dream. It is something in the in your state of sleep that you get to experience. Alright? So he said that he had had a wonderful dream the previous night. Very good. Last night, as I said, or yesterday changes to previous day. Last night changes to previous night. So based on that rule you can go with option and a little bit of logic of course which you guys obviously have so 22 is d 4 correct we've already got it there right 23 he said i'm buying a new pen i'm buying a new pen he said that he 
am buying a new pen right uh, present continuous right i'm buying a new pen present continuous he said that present continuous changes to past continuous and see the tense changes to present continuous changes to past continuous and um, with the addition of another conjunction that right so i think the obvious changes are here so he said that he was buying he was buying a new pen very good he bade his love goodbye right you know bade is the past tense of the verb bid 23 is second uh 24 he bade his love goodbye he said he bade his love basically you know maybe a girlfriend or his wife or somebody who he loves all right when you say bade his love goodbye um you know when you this is generally with reference to uh, either his girlfriend or maybe his wife or spouse somebody right not just uh, when you say his love it is not just anybody who you love because you love your children you love your parents but here the reference is to his girlfriend right and i don't know why i'm even explaining you guys would already know it isn't it <laughs> okay so he said goodbye my love okay maybe this is how he addresses his sweetheart maybe all right he said goodbye my love right and or oh, goodbye um you never exclaim goodbye love because when you when you bidding somebody a goodbye you're not in a state of excitement you are uh, probably a little dull on your energy so definitely goodbye love is not correct and he wished definitely not because here you're talking about bidding goodbye all right so you have to say he said goodbye my love so 24 is 4 25th you did not return your book yesterday said the librarian librarian said that he had not returned had not returned you did not return did not return you had not returned that he had not returned his book the previous day okay now here the tricky thing is if you look at the d option you will say your book yesterday you the librarian said that you had not returned now when we, when somebody is reporting you don't say you right i i have to say if i am reporting everybody and say i have to say well you did not okay book not been returned the previous day the librarian said uh, the librarian said that he had not returned his book the previous day whosoever he was engaged in the conversation with 25th first very good 26 you're all doing very well said mr jones mr jones said that you all are so they again plural reference you all are they are doing we change to were were they were all doing very well present continuous changes to past continuous so they were it's were because this is a plural reference 27th question for the direct and indirect speech I finished it several days ago said Jack Jack said that I finished simple past tense changes to past perfect tense that he had finished I ideally it would change to that but if that's not an obvious change but the obvious changes we have to look at that he had finished it several days earlier he had finished it several days earlier okay or several days ago if you look at it several days ago is there but you have to first look at the obvious changes the obvious changes will be probably that then the tense changes present continuous changes to past continuous then comes these changes okay so you have to uh, look at that so 27 considering that 26th is third and 27th is second Thank you.